Thank you, Father God. We worship you and we praise you. Father, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence in this place today, Father God. You are good and your mercy endures forever, Father. We worship you from our hearts this morning. Father, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do in this place today, Father God. For the plan that you have for us, Father, because your plans are good. Hallelujah. Your word tells us that you know the plans that you have for us plans to prosper us, to give us a hope and to give us a future, Father. So we rest easy this morning knowing, Father, that your plans for us do not include harm, but they are good, Father, because you are good. And every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow of turning. Hallelujah. No variation whatsoever. You are good. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Got a new one this morning. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain won't leave me alone I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Anybody like that? Because fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. No fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. No fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love.
precious there's power in the blood of Jesus. Sing it out. How priceless, how precious there's power in the blood. How priceless, how precious there's power in the blood of Jesus. There is power, power, one word. said that her neighbor's uh, house got a couple of na- houses na- the neighbors got a couple of neighbors bitty, bitty, bitty. got a couple of neighbors that their house is just inches away from being flooded so we need to pray that uh, water will reside and recede and, and disappear go away wherever it came from amen but uh, but let's just pray and that might be more houses in the area as well so father in the name of Jesus Lord we just come against the flood waters Lord, that have been uh, let loose upon Morgan County and the surrounding counties in North Alabama. Lord, we come against those uh, flood waters in the name of Jesus. We command them to stand and recede in the name of Jesus. Go from those places in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and praise you that they will not invade another home, another garage, or any other occupied place. In Jesus' name, Father, that the flood waters stop now. In Jesus' name we pray. And all that agrees with that says amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Let's go ahead and receive then uh, this morning's tithes and offerings. Amen. Uh, uh, so uh, take an offering envelope. Offering envelopes are there on the, in the pocket on the chair in front of you. And as you get your offering ready, I want to remind you of a scripture found in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It says there, it says, Thou shalt not forget the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Well, one translation of that says he's given us authority to get wealth or the ability to get wealth. So we've got ability. He's given us the ability to get wealth. He said, forget not the Lord thy God, which gives thee the power or ability to get wealth. And so I don't know why in the world people fight that message that God wants you to prosper. I mean, when it's all through the scripture that God wants you to prosper. He said, it goes on to say, it says, uh, thou shalt not forget the Lord thy God, which gives thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with you, 
that he swore unto your fathers. So the purpose of wealth is to establish the covenant. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So he's given us that ability to get wealth. So he said, don't forget this. Don't, don't forget this. And uh, so he's given us the power, the ability to get wealth. And that's what we're doing here this morning, receiving this offering. You're exercising your ability. You're exercising your authority to get wealth. This is where it starts here. As you give, amen, amen you're exercising that authority, amen, to get wealth. And because he says if we tithe, he'll open the windows of heaven, pour us out yes. blessings, we wouldn't have room enough to receive. Yes. Amen. If we give, it's given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shake it together, running over. The, the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. So I'm mean, over and over and over again. He's told us how to get wealth. So he's given us that power, given us that ability. Use your ability this morning as we receive the offering. Ushers, y'all go ahead and uh, uh, receive the offering. And uh, let, let, just let me remind you that we do have a guest speaker today, and we'll be receiving two offerings. So if you're, you came only ready to give in one offering, save that offering and give it at the end. You'll re be receiving Brother Milo in the offering at the end. So, but, uh, but this offering will go to the church. The next offering will go to Brother Milo. So if you can only give in one offering, wait to the end. Amen. Because we want to bless Brother Milo real good. Amen. Amen. All right. First-time visitors, if you're a first-time visitor at Decatur Christian Fellowship, uh, there's a card. Uh, welcome to Decatur Christian Fellowship in the pocket of the chair in front of you there. Uh, fill that out. Amen. And uh, give, give it to the back table. Uh, it, no, not the back table. Is it, is it, uh, okay. All right, to the back table. I thought we put them in those pep or the bookstore. Okay, all right. Take it to the back table. Today, this is today on. Today on. Amen, because Karen's back there working the book table. Amen. So tap, fill that card out, take it to that back table there, and we've got a gift we want to give you. Amen, but you've got to turn in that card. Turn in that card, and we'll give you a gift if you're a first-time visitor. Praise the Lord. Also, if you want to be baptized or get involved in the church or any other thing, there's a call... There's a card called the connection card. Fill that card out. Give it to an usher. Drop it, drop it in the pedestals on the way out this morning or leave it in your seats. And uh, we'll get in touch with you and get you operating, working here at the church. Amen. Praise God. Everybody ought to be water baptized. Everybody ought to have a job in the church. Everybody ought to be doing something. Amen. So, so do this. Huh? We, there's supposed to be a baptism. Unless somebody signs up. If you sign up. What, what is in the bulletin? in the bulletin. Anyway, fill that out. I know I don't, I don't do, usually do these. So. <laughs> so fill that out. Praise the Lord. All right, let's pray over the offering. Amen. And we'll get to do some more praise and worship. Amen. But we welcome you all today. It's going to be awesome today. Amen. So release your faith. Get in faith. Let's believe God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord, for all the blessings you've given us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to so into the kingdom of God. We do so, Father, in faith, knowing, Father, that without faith it's impossible to please you. So, Lord, we mix faith, Lord, with our giving this morning, and we exercise our ability to get wealth this morning. Lord, we thank you for it. We believe you for it. Release our faith and believe, Lord, that you give it back to the people. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will men pour in their laps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have church. Welcome to Decatur Christian Fellowship. We're so glad that you're here today. On March 6th, we're going to have a water baptism. Grab the Connect card on the seat back in front of you, fill it out, drop it in the offering bucket or the white pedestals on the back, and let us know if you're interested. Food on the 4th is this Wednesday night. You want to meet us in the FLC with something yummy to eat and come enjoy fellowship with us. And just a reminder, this is the last week to turn in your $50 for your kid to go to kids camp this year. If your kid is interested, see Miss Reagan and sign up now. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and text DCF Text to 28950. That's DCF Text to 28950. That way you know everything that's going on in church. And it won't just be a lot of information, it's going to be the best stuff you'll get to know first. So text it right now. We've got Swamp Johns that is going to be on sale all the month of March that's going to be benefiting kids camp. The tickets are $12.50 and the pickup date is going to be on April 2nd from 4 to 7 p.m. Thank you for helping out. Thank you for being here with us today. We sure hope you enjoy service. Be blessed. and 
and mercy that follow us all the days of our lives, Father. We worship you today. We love you, Father God. We thank you for your plan for us, Father God. Glory to you, most high. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love.
taking me by the hand. You're taking me by. Taking me by the hand, giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes in. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you and praise you and thank you for your love that changed everything. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Father God. If you're glad that the Lord changed everything for you, hallelujah. Would you raise up a shout this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Greet your neighbor and you can be seated. Good to see you this morning. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all ready to have church? Oh, we've already had church. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Mama don't need much of an introduction. He's been here many times. some people you like to be around and you know some people you be around and uh, you know they can you know you leave them and you think oh lord you know just weight it down and then there's some people you're around they just lift you up amen and just to encourage you and you know that just that spirit gets on you praise the lord so we're we're excited uh to have Mylon and christy with us this morning and uh, uh their blessing and they'll be a blessing to you this morning i'm sure so y'all go ahead and come praise the lord i lose them and let them go amen hallelujah Thank you, sir. <clears throat> How y'all doing this morning? How many of y'all were with us last night? All right, let me see. Who was not there last night? Oh, we're going to have a good time this morning. The vittles were good. The fellowship was better. It was awesome. We got rained on. I told them last night, if, it, if, if coming here last year and this year is any indication Y'all need to only call me when you're having a drought <laughs> because we've had a storm. We've had, I mean, I went out in the car last night to get in, to get the car out of the parking lot to pull it up in front of the hotel so Christy wouldn't get her hair wet, even though I've got as much as she does. And, you know, that's my job. So I went out there, and I'm telling you, between the front of that hotel, and that car wasn't 25 feet from the front. I mean, it was like the devil was out there with buckets. They're like, here he comes, guys. Oh, my goodness, I was soaked. It was awesome. Anyway, God's good, men. We had a good night's sleep. I hope you did, too. We're gonna, I say this everywhere I go, and I hadn't been here in a year, so let me say it again. I believe that God's people are to have more fun than anybody else. I believe if you go into heaven, you ought to be in a better mood than if you're going to hell. Amen? Let me see some teeth in here this morning. Come on. Amen. This is good news. The gospel is good. There's no bad news in the Bible. This is good stuff. We serve a good God. He's good all the time. You don't have to ask him to do good stuff. He's going to do something good today whether you like it or not. Everything he does is good. Now, we got to get this settled right up front. God good, devil bad. You all know that one, right? Because God gets the blame for bad stuff. You know, if though, if that had been tornadoes come through here last night and blow your house away, you know what the insurance calls that? An act of God. Have you noticed they never blame anything on the devil? He gets a free pass. Not in my house. Praise God, I know who the thief is. And so we just stop him in his tracks, and if he stole something from us before we learn the truth, we get it back seven times in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So this is good news. I'm going to submit some holy information to you today. We're going to have a whole lot of fun, and we're going to go get something to eat. It's going to be the best week of our lives, y'all. I'm prophesying now. If you're used to having somebody say, Thus saith the Lord, I won't be doing that today. 
If you gotta, if you gotta convince people it's the Lord, it probably isn't. You know. But he said, "I know the plans I have for you," declares the Lord. This is God talking now. I know the plans I have for you, and they're good plans. You're going to like, you find out what these plans are. You're going to like these plans. They're to bless you, not to harm you. Amen. They're to prosper you. They're to heal you. They're to fix you. Man, they'll make your life better in every way, every day. Yes, Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but if I, hadn't, if I didn't have those plans, I'd change my plans. I had to change all mine and receive his, amen. Jesus said, I'm the way. There is one way. He, he didn't say I'm the, a better way or I'm a really good way. He said, I am the, the way. And when you do things the way, when I study his word, that's why we're studying it this morning. We, we study it, we think about it, we meditate on it. And when it gets from here to here, and it does, Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. We, we, faith, and Jesus said it's with the heart that man believes, not the brain. Amen. Use your mind to consider what you've just read or what's been spoken to you, ministered to you. But once you make a decision that God is honest, that's the simplest decision but the most important one you'll ever make. The word of God is the truth. God has integrity. He's not trying to sell Bibles. He's not, he's not starting a new club this week. He's just good. He loves everybody the same, wants to bless everybody. So if you know somebody really blessed, you can have what they have because he loves you just as much as they do, as he, as he does them. Amen? So we're going to submit some holy information to you. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. I'm going to show you this little uh, video of our new TV show, and uh, and then I'm going to introduce my good-looking wife to you. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Mylon Lefebvre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Christy, y'all. <laughs> Good morning. Did we have that last year? Have y'all seen that before? Who Was that new for anybody? that intro okay good good well we are so excited for the new show and that intro I always giggle when I see that last drone shot that's a drone we were standing in the middle of the road and they were on their uh, cell phones texting each other saying car come and tell them to move <laughs> so we'd go yeah, up there there'd be cars behind us doing 90 <laughs> yeah. and we're trying to smile and act like ah. <laughs> right. So that was quite an adventure, but, but thank you for celebrating with us. That has been just such a blessing from the Lord. And first of all, I want to let you know we are so excited to be here. We love your pastor. Yes, we do. Pastor John and Pastor Sheila, thank <laughs> you for the honor and the privilege of being here. We, we do not take it lightly, nor no, do we, we take don't. it for granted. Thank you. And you know, your pastors are some of our very favorites that we go to. We just have such respect and honor for them. Aren't you so blessed to have such anointed Amen. pastors? Amen. 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 We love you guys. And let me say something. I know that pastor would never tell this, but and I hope it's okay for me too, but this church, last year, of course, y'all gave us a love offering when we came to the minister. But later on in the year, the Lord spoke to pastor 
and he called me and he said, what does it cost to make one of those TV shows? And I had to figure it up because I was guessing in the beginning and until we did a bunch of them, I didn't know how to average it out. And so it was like $5,000. And this church sent us a check and paid for one week of that TV show. Now, let me tell you what that means. If you could sit at my computer every morning and read those testimonies that come in. I got one the other day from Australia, one from Nova Scotia. One, I mean, people, I'm talking about hurting people. I'm talking about people who were addicted to drugs. One, one lady, uh, she had been a meth addict. She had, her life had gotten so bad, she'd ended up living with a drug dealer, and she lost her children. I mean, her life was messed up, and she saw one of those TV shows, and God spoke to her, and she's now in a good church. She's working on getting her kids back. She hadn't done any drugs in four months. I just read this, man. I mean, gave her life to Jesus, reading the Bible every day. The church is helping her. She's, she's got a job now. She's left the guy that she was living with, trying to get her marriage back together. I mean, man, God is fixing lives. And when you get to heaven... Your offerings going into this church, I mean, they're, he's doing that, of course, with a lot of stuff that I don't know about and places I don't know anything about. But just in this one ministry, me and you are leading people to Jesus Christ. There's going to be people who w would have gone to hell, and you're going to meet them in heaven. They would have gone to hell, but you obeyed God, and you sowed, and you brought your tithes and offerings, and they made their way around the kingdom to the right place at the right time. And I just aren't. That, that is so precious, man. Thank you for trusting us enough to, to believe that our ministry was important enough to sow in. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Yes. Go ahead, baby. I didn't mean to break in on no, you. No, that's powerful. And I, that was on my heart, too, to let him know the testimonies that we're getting daily. Oh, now, my goodness. Daily yeah, of yeah. people getting free of drugs, marriages being restored, bodies Whew. being healed. We are receiving them daily now. So praise God for that. And it's on a dish. Uh, Dish Channel 265, or you can get it on Roku if you have a smart TV, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, um, or on demand anytime on our website. And we have every episode, so you can catch up and and anytime, anytime. That's right. They're shot in 4K, so if you go on the if you go on the internet, they're actually uh, clearer than they are on TV. It's and one nice. more, just because we're so excited, and we got to let you know because you're in it with us now. Um, we just got a report uh, two days ago on Friday that Brother Copeland is going to appear on the show with us for one full week. <laughs> yeah. So five shows. So very, we're so excited. So we're, we'll be letting you know about that and where you can catch it. And that Thank one's going to be filmed in Monument Valley, that same location. That's one of his favorite places. So he wants to film there. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if y'all believe in prosperity and in it supernatural increase. I'm sure you do being taught here. But our TV show had was the last one to come on their network. So really, nobody really knew we were there in the beginning. And they were all the other people had been there for a long time. So we got the slots like 4 a.m. You know what I mean? It's not like we were getting the best slot. We were the last ones added. And so uh, we had a smaller audience. And maybe, I don't know, I'd be guessing. I have no way of knowing how many people were watching. But those shows that we're going to do with Brother Copeland, his audience is 885 million viewers. That's the increase, y'all. He's the only in China and Russia and Africa. There's not a... Do we know any nations they're not on? I mean, they cover the world. That's almost one-seventh of the world's population, people. So we're going to get the word out, and, and you're a part of it. That's exciting. Amen. 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 So we also have some other resources available in the back here. And the reason why, again, we offer these to you is so that you would know the truth of God's word, and that truth would make you free. Amen. So we have music. We have Mylan's uh, Bow Down Praise and Worship music. And let me say this, that praise and worship, oh my goodness, you are so that was blessed. Awesome. Again, that to was have such excellent. anointed praise and worship, Thank that you, was Jesus. powerful. Praise and worship team, will you just, I'd like to just recognize you. Awesome. And, yeah. 
so thank you for that. You just ushered us right into the presence of the Amen. Lord, and that was powerful. Amen. The anointing destroys every yoke. It removes every burden. Yes, it does. In his presence is fullness of joy. joy. Hallelujah. So I just honor you guys for that, your team. And then we also have the rocking stuff, Mylon and Broken Heart, if you'd like to pick that up. We still get requests from the rockers out there. Do I have any rockers in the audience? It is 80 style contemporary <laughs> Christian rock, so you can check that out. But it is full of the Word of God. You can sing along because you can understand the words. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and then we also have our cool, this is new. We just got our broken heart hats. We had a lot of requests for these, so we redid them. The vintage design of broken heart. And so we've got these in the back if you'd like to check them out. And then we I, think, also I think Pastor needs one of oh those. Yeah, you, you never know when, you, right. when you're going to be out. There you go. Oh, you know what? I went out of order up there. Yeah, that looks Looking good. Looking good. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I just realized I went out of order up there. Thank you guys for following along. Um, we do have Mylan's Life Story in book format. Uh, for every book sold, we're sewing at least one into the life of a prisoner or soldier in harm's way. We have thousands in the prisons. We're actually going back this year to prisons, and so you'll be seeing those shows soon. We aired the prison shows this week, and again, I was so touched. I cried in every show when I saw those big guys all tattooed up, and you could see them just tearing up, but wiping it away real quick so none of their buddies saw them crying. I mean, it was just powerful, so humbling every time we go in. So these books, it is such an honor. When we go in, we hand each and every one one of these in a black and white version. We have to do paper because the warden said they can make a weapon out of something like that. So we make yeah. it safe for them. And, and so we hand these out. But we do have the smaller version available to you now um, in Without Him. And it's a full-color book, but it's the smaller portable paperback size. So we have two options available. It's the same book. It's mm -hmm. just got a different cover on it. It's a different size. Yes. But uh, the bottom line is it's, it's 114 pictures in here. It takes about an hour and a half to read this thing. But, you know, Satan's defeated by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That's the only reason he wrote this. I am not, you know, the first half of this book was the first 35 years before I really gave and surrendered my life to Jesus. It was a mess. And it's not something I'm proud of and didn't want to talk to everybody about. But the Lord told me, humble yourself. Most people, m most Christians write books about all the sweet stuff Jesus did after they gave their life to Jesus. They don't tell you what hound dogs they were and why the devil got such a good shot at them because of all the dumb decisions they made. The Lord told me, humble yourself, be transparent, admit the good, bad, and the ugly so they'll see why your life got so messed up. And then they'll be able to see what I did about it when you got on your knees. And started studying my word and trying to figure out how to do that. So anyway, every time somebody buys either one of these, that pays for a book that we give to a prisoner. And we're going back in in October. Uh, yeah, we're going back into prisons again this year. Film some more TV shows. And then we also have teaching. This is Mylon's latest, God is Honest. And there is a difference between believing there is a God oh boy. and believing God. Amen. So we have this available. And then the um, we also have Holy Matrimony, How to Turn Your Marriage into Holy Matrimony. For those of you who were there last night, it's about two hours of teaching on that subject matter, how to have Holy Matrimony. It's available at the table. And then the last thing I want to tell you about is The Adventures of Twirling Girl. And this is my personal testimony of how the Lord proved to me that a father of the fatherless is God. Amen. And that he could meet every need, that I have a heavenly father. Amen. When my earthly daddy walked away, I have a heavenly father. Amen. And he loves me, he cares for me, and he hears yes, me when I pray. Does. And so that revelation changed my life, completely changed it. And it was in this story, this true story. So the book is for your little ones, the CDs for you. And we just had a breakthrough on that last year global give a book picked it up and they are distributing it through private sponsorships um, in an orphanage in mexico a public school public elementary school um, a catholic school um, in some christian schools and then they just called me this week and it's going to be distributed at a women's event for all the little girls that come it's a princess program awesome. <laughs> and so i'm so excited it's just been just precious what an uh 
wonderful opportunity to share the love of the Lord with the little ones. Yeah. So if you want to and then we also have a website, Milan.org. You can get all the product on the web, our itinerary, Milan's bio. You can sign up to receive our free monthly teaching. We have an app. It's free. Same keywords, Milan.org. Connect with all of our social media sites. And I think that's it. If you have any other questions, if I miss something, I'll be at the table after service. But I did want to have this quick encouragement for you, please. We usually don't go this long. I don't when I'm up here. Because I know you're, you came to hear him preach. Uh, but I, we just feel so at home here. We consider you family. Amen. So when we come up here, we just relax. We're at home. <laughs> so I just want to quickly encourage you to just get ready to have ears to hear mm. what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this moment. Amen. In this moment, we believe that the Lord has given us the right word at the right moment. And it will be good to you when you hear it. And Proverbs says, if we'll hear counsel and receive instruction and even accept correction. Now, correction, a lot of us, we don't want to talk about because the flesh always thinks it's doing just fine. <laughs> but I want to remind you that we're all destined. Our destiny is to be changed, not stay the same, but changed into the image of the Son of God. So every time I compare myself to Jesus, I need to change. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. So we accept correction, and many times it's just an adjustment in our thinking and an attitude. So if we'll accept correction, here's the reward. You will be wise in the time to come. Amen. Mm. Wow. For the amen. times that are ahead, the future will walk in the wisdom of God if we'll hear counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction because wisdom is the principal thing. God Almighty, the creator of the universe, said the most important thing for us to receive is the wisdom of God. So I'm ready to receive it today. How about you? Amen. Will you say this after me? I hear the counsel of God. I hear the counsel of God. And I receive his instruction. I receive his instruction. And I gladly accept his correction. That I may be wise in the time to come. Amen. Amen. So be it. We love you. Thank you, baby. I need you to join your faith with me this morning. The last thing you need is some of my opinions. They just got me in a big mess. We need to hear God. You don't really need to hear my own. When we hear God, things get better. And when we don't, we can play church. We can be religious as we want to. Muslims are religious. Buddhists are religious. Being a religious Christian won't help you any. Jesus said there'll be those in the last days. Who believes we're in the last days? He said there'll be some in the last days who will have a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. They'll have the formula down. They'll be hanging out under a steeple somewhere. They'll be singing in the choir. They'll get baptized. They got the formula, the form of godliness. They go to Bible school. They go to Bible study. They go, some of them pray in tongues. I mean, all kind of, some of them fast. They do all kind of stuff. But when it comes to having the power of God, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And without faith, you got no power. That's your hookup to God and all. Uh, and by the way, we ain't talking about the fairly power. We're talking about almighty God. Don't take no stuff off the devil, God. Amen? Amen? Now, we need to be hooked up with that power. That's what makes a Christian have a good life. When the devil attacks you, you just whip his ugly behind and kick him out of your life and put him under your feet. Now, that's having fun as a Christian. Devil coming along eating your lunch anytime he's in the mood, that ain't no fun. And you go to church and they have to pretend like you having the victory. That's religion. We don't want religion. We want Jesus. We want the power of God in our lives. Amen? We got we got important things to do. You need to be healthy to do that. And and you gotta have the power of God to, to get healed when you need it. Amen. To get to get your marriage into holy matrimony. That's not something. If we knew how to do it with our brain, we wouldn't have messed it up to start with. 
Amen. We need the power of God. So let's go before the throne of grace and, and uh, receive a fresh. Come to you, sir, in the holy name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask for a door of utterance to be opened unto us by your Holy Spirit, God. Lord, we ask you to cause us to think your thoughts and to speak your word only. All you and none of me, Jesus, I surrender, I submit to you, sir. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for uh, bringing forth the word that you want known. Jesus to us today, that he may be high and lifted up and draw us all men unto himself. And, sir, we'll be very careful to give you the glory and the honor for it. Thank you for fresh manna from heaven today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have done something that I need to apologize, first of all, to the tech crew. I was setting up in pastor's office while y'all were doing the beginning of worship, and the Lord spoke to me, and I sent y'all, whatever I sent you, you're going to on there today. He completely switched everything on me, and uh, so I'm going to give you some scriptures you can put up on the fly, and don't worry if you're late getting them up, it's my fault. They're perfect. I missed, you know, I'll take the blame if there is any. But I believe God's going to show us something that we need to see here today. Um, I believe I heard the Lord say it's time for some people, I'm not sure who, it's none of my business, but it's time for some people to hit the reset button. You know what happens when the computer gets messed up and you, you turn it off and turn it back on and reset everything? It just somehow magically fixes itself, doesn't it? Well, in God, there is a place where you just need to sometime, you need to just start over. And uh, I don't know about you, I was 35 when I started over. And I remember the day, I remember I had been, I'd gone to church, I, I've testified here before. You know, my parents were gospel singers, my granddaddy was a preacher. I went to church from the time I was a little kid, mama, I mean, going to church was just not something her kids were not going to do. And my dad, I'm not sure he would have taken us, but he was the enforcer in our family, the sergeant at arms. Does anybody remember? You remember the days when you could whip your kids without getting sued? <laughs> well, my daddy didn't negotiate with his kids. He made decisions, and we all said, yes, sir, and, and uh, so we went to church. But I didn't go because I wanted to be in church. I went because daddy was bigger than me. And so I went with the idea as I got older and bigger that one of these days I'm going to be as big as daddy and now I'm out of here, you know. And the reason was because I was not getting, uh, I, was, I was watching what was being said and I was asking questions and I wasn't getting answers. There was a whole lot of what we call fire and brimstone preaching. Anybody remember the old days when there was a lot of preaching on what not to do? There was a lot of preaching uh, on don't smoke, don't chew, or run women who do. But if you don't sin, then what do you do? Because in our church, we just none of the women cut their hair, and they didn't wear makeup, and they, they didn't wear jewelry. My mother couldn't wear a, a wedding ring to show that she was married to my daddy. And we didn't go to movies. It didn't matter if they were about Jesus. We didn't go to movies. We didn't, we didn't play Monopoly because it had dice. We didn't play Rook cards or Uno because they were cards. You know, they had some sin city. We, there was a rule. You know, the, Jesus, God gave us 10 commandments, and then the Pharisees gave us 600. When is 616? You know, the Pharisees, they make a rule every Tuesday. They come up with another one. I mean, they, we got thousands by now, and that's what causes religion. Everybody telling everybody else how to think and, and be. But, man, the Word of God sets you free. He said, it, if you'll trust me and do things my way, you'll be free and free indeed. Amen. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. liberty. Glory to God. So, you know, I, let, let me tell you what. this Today I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. I'm going to submit some thoughts on absolute faith. Getting to a place where there's no doubt, no worry, no fear where you've settled the issue, drew a line in the sand, crossed over into God, and never looked back, burned the bridge to fear and worry and doubt and unbelief. So 
Uh, I looked up the word absolute in the dictionary. I like to use Webster's, but I also asked Siri and Google what they thought about it. So let me read to you what uh, absolute, what, what everybody came up with. It's perfect. It means to be perfect, complete, not mixed, but pure, not limited, as in absolute power. It's positive, not doubted, real, absolute truth, and it's not relative to your circumstance or situation. In other words, when something is absolutely true, it doesn't matter who you are or where you came from or what you did or what they said or what she did or what happened, it's still the truth. Amen? Now, first of all, I just want to establish, before we go any further, that God is absolutely good. He does good things. He's never hurt anybody. He's do he doesn't do any bad things. If you are believing him and standing on his word, he will not jerk the carpet out from under you. And, ha, 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 I got you that. No, that ain't God. The devil will do that to you, but God won't do that to you. Uh, Psalm 18 and verse 30, I'm going to go quick, so I don't know if you even need to put this up. It's only four words. Uh, five, six, seven. <laughs> That's increase, isn't it? Psalm 18 and verse 30 in the Amplified says, As for God, his way is perfect. Psalm 19, verse 7 through 9 in the NLT says, The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. The instructions of God will encourage you, increase you, refresh you, restore your soul. Amen. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Thank God for that. I'll take that. Amen. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. Now, if you got joy in your heart, you realize it's impossible to be depressed with joy in your heart. The commands of the Lord, I'm going to read that again. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. The commands of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever, and the laws of the Lord are true, and each one is fair. The law or the word of God is not only true, but it's fair. Have you noticed how uh, the tithe, I mean, some people think, oh, well, it's not any big deal for a rich guy. No, it cost him a whole lot more than the poor guy. That 10% is the same for everybody. It's not much for a poor guy, but for a rich guy, it could be a lot of money. Amen? God is he's honest and good and fair. There is a absolutely perfect sacrifice. Now, I'm going someplace, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read these absolutes to you because I want you to see. You'll see a pattern here. Peter, uh, 1 Peter, Peter 1 and verse 16 in the New King James says, you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That means perfect. You know, the first murder in the Bible was over one guy, gave, two brothers were given their tithe to the Lord, and one of them gave him his first fruits, the best he had, and one of them gave him what was left over and what he didn't want. And God didn't even take it. He didn't even he didn't carry anything. God, it's not like God needs something. If he needs something, all he has to do is say it. When he speaks, things happen. He said, let there be light and the darkness fled. Glory to God. To accept or believe for less than what he sacrificed his life to give us is a dishonor to his perfect and complete sacrifice. Does anybody agree with that? Amen. Amen. Do we believe that he absolutely forgave our sins? This is really important. Then why would we accept or believe anything less in healing, provision, or protection? In other words, if he's absolutely good, he's absolutely God, he's good all the time in any circumstance. Do you all believe that? 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20 says, For as many as are the promises of God in Christ... They are yes and amen. In other words, there's no gray area with God. Everything is yes and amen. 
If you stand on the promise of God, you don't have to beg him and pray a thousand times for that to come true. He's already said, if you ask me for something I promised you, the answer I will give you every time is yes, and so be it. He's never said, if somebody comes to God and says, please forgive me for my sins, God has never said, you know what, I don't like you. I remember what you said last Thursday, and I watched what you did last week, and I ain't forgiving you. No, it's never happened, and it never will. Yes and amen. Sure, I'll forgive you. Sure, I'll let you. Sure, I'll give you mercy. Sure, I'll help you. I love you. Amen. Amen. God, basically, what I'm trying to do, this absolute thing, it means that God doesn't do anything in part. He won't halfway fix you unless you're just halfway trusting him. If you just give him your problems, he'll work on that. But if you give him your life, some people give him the, the I mean, I did. I told you I didn't, I didn't go to church for the right reason. I wasn't seeking God. I was there for the wrong reason, and so later on I came to him and realized I gave him my problems. I gave him my sins. I didn't want to go to hell. Now, I must have got saved at least 100 times as a kid. Do you all know what I'm talking about? I mean, I'd go to church, and I'd get, I didn't want to be there, but I'd still get under conviction when the Spirit of God started moving, and I'd go down there, and I'd, get, I'd repent of my sins. I didn't change anything because I wasn't reading the Bible. If you don't get your mind renewed, you're going to... Your, your heart may be cleansed, but that old unrenewed mind will get that heart in a mess before you get out of church. You have to do something dumb in the parking lot. So, you know, I had to get to the point where I surrendered my relationships, my money. You know, a lot of Christians are broke because they trust God with their sins, and if they get sick, they'll ask him for help. They want, they want him in on that deal, you know what I mean, for sure. Uh but when it comes to their finances, no, 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 I got this. Uh, you know, so they got this. It ain't much, but they got it, you know. And I was there, too. That's exactly where I was. I, I laugh every time I see that. Christy laughed about that uh, video we played up there. There's a place, you know, somebody else wrote that intro. They, let, they read my book, but they, somebody else wrote it, and I stood there and read it, the copy into a microphone. And there was, a, there was a line in there that said, I made so much money I didn't know what to do with it. That You know how silly that is, don't you? I could have figured out something to do with that money. If I Come on. I mean, are you kidding me? There ain't that much money. <laughs> Psalm 103 says, He forgives all my sins. Say that with me. He forgives all my sins. And then it says this. Let, let's put up Psalm 103, uh, verse two I think it is he forgives all my sins he heals all my diseases now I want you to see this because if you get sick and I'm 74 if you live long enough it's just a matter of time until you know the road takes its toll you know you get some miles on you eventually there's going to be a challenge in your body of some kind and you're going to have to decide whether this is whether God's honest or not he forgives all our sins, Psalm 103. He heals all of our diseases, all of them. Not some uh, absolute, all of them? Absolutely. You have to, you have to decide now. If, if y'all can put that up for me, please put up Psalm 103. I'm sorry, it's verse 3. I'm being, thank you, tag team preaching. Who, who, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. Now, this is important that you, I mean, there will be a test on this, y'all. Most people believe that God forgives all your sins, but most people are not sure about that getting healed. Every sickness, every disease, Psalm 91 says, with long life, I will show him my salvation. Long life. So you don't need to be worrying every time the doctor says, uh-oh, we saw something in there, man, those symptoms you were having. I know it's been uncomfortable. Now we got to, and by the way, if you go to the doctor, they got some big words to scare you with. 
long word, you know, and they're in Latin. I don't know why they won't tell you in English, but they got some long, and, and, if, and they'll give you medications that if you read the side effects, they're all worse than the original disease. You know what I mean? So what's going on there? The spirit of fear is trying to let you, trying to attack you and steal your peace and steal your joy and keep you and get you out of the place of rest. But if you believe God is honest, when you go to the doctor, you're healed. By his stripes you were, and if you believe it, by his stripes you still are healed. So you don't have to worry about the end results. Boy, it's awful quiet in here. Let's say it heals all my diseases. If you absolutely believe that, now you're going to live a long life. Filled with many blessings, God's going to show his salvation. Now, if you think God's a liar, not, you ain't going to live a long life. I'm going to say that again. Some people think you've got to worship the devil to be opposed to God. God. No, God said, you've spoken strong words against me. You said my word wasn't true. You've, you've implied that I made you a promise and didn't keep it. I mean, the... the when, when, those, when God brought Israel out of slavery, he, he, there was an 11-day walk that have, would have walked them from Egypt to the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. On the way there, while they were in Egypt, they saw all kind of signs and wonders and miracles. He even parted the Red Sea in front of their eyes. Now, if you walk through an ocean with it standing up there, and then you watch the bad guys get wiped out when they try it, that ought to build your faith. You ought to have some clue that, uh-oh, Moses didn't pull that off. That's got to be God. And then they went through a series of things where everything God told them, they sent in those spies into that promised land, and it was exactly like they... <laughs> It was exactly like God said it was. But there were some giants in there. Yeah. Promised land, there's some giants. There's some stuff out there that'll scare you that you're not sure about, but boy, it, it, it looks big. And that's why he told us how to speak to mountains and move them. He told us how to use our faith, the God kind of faith. I mean, it, the, the giants are not a problem when we trust God. But that situation where they said, there were people who actually said, God brought us out here in the desert to kill us. And he called that the provocation. The times where he was provoked. He said, he fi after 10 times, he finally said, okay, you say I brought you out here to die? So he, he kept them out there for 40 years, walking in circles till that old generation died. He let them have what they, what they said. It wasn't his will. It wasn't his plan. But the next generation who thought he was honest went into the promised land. No problem. Now, we got to decide there is a place in God where we enter his rest by faith. Let me, let me just read you a few more of these absolutes. I want you to get... I want you to see the pattern here. John 3 and 15 says he wishes that none should perish, but all should have everlasting life. How many? All. all. That means everybody. The will of God is that nobody go to hell, that everybody live forever in heaven. Now, some people say, well, you know, God's in control. I want to tell you, I want to remind you, if God was in control, everybody would be saved today. Yeah. Nobody would be in prison Nobody would have beat their wife up last night or their kids. Nobody would have raped or shot anybody last night. Come on, people. God has given us a free will, and he will not violate your will. He will let you worship him, but he will let you curse him. Do you know how many people in the world use God as half a word every day? He'll let you go to heaven, and he'll let you go to hell. If you want to go bad enough, he'll let you. It's not his will that any should perish. But if you're determined to perish, he'll let you. It's not his will for you to die of sickness and disease. But if you think he's a liar, he'll let you die of sickness and disease. 
but he is absolutely honest. The word of God is the truth. Romans 10 and verse 13 says, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How many people? Everyone, absolutely anybody that's willing to call on the name of the Lord. Psalm 91 verse 7 through 10 says, No tragedy, no calamity, no plague, no evil shall come near you. I bet you a bunch, I bet you we wasn't the only ones talking to that storm yesterday. We told that, that the possibility of tornadoes just get on out of here. So we got rained on, but we didn't have our, you know, our hat blown off or anything. Isaiah 54 and verse 17 says, No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Are you seeing how many weapons? What kind? Zero. Absolutely no weapon. Do you all remember the... Uh, Y'all remember the guy who tried to blow up his shoe on an airplane? Couldn't get his couldn't couldn't get his shoe lit. It wouldn't. He, they had spent thirty four thousand dollars building a set of Nikes with C four in them. Some terrorist. And the guy, another guy. I remember one guy was on a flight from somewhere in Canada to Detroit. He had a bomb in his underwear. I mean, surely there's a better place for a bomb. Come on, people. And this old boy, he's on there trying to lie. He can't get his, his underwear smoking. Do you know, you know, when you're a terrorist and you can't blow up your underwear, that's a bad day at the office. All, you, all your buddies are watching and the plane don't blow, and you know what I mean? You're just sitting there smoking. I'm telling you, that's pitiful. Now, what's the deal? What happened? Somebody on that plane went on there saying no weapon formed. They didn't know what an underwear bomb was. Somebody on that plane had their angels out there and believe in God that God has given his angels charge over me, and they go, they accompany me. If I get on a plane, they get on the plane. If I get on my motorcycle, they get on my, they go with me. They, that's what he said, Psalm 91. I've given my angels charge over you. They accompany you, defend you, protect you, and deliver you from all harm. Hallelujah. But not if you don't believe it. If you think God's a liar, you better watch out for them terrorists. They'll blow you up with their underwear. They, I, the, the one next to you may have a, a bra bomb on. You don't ever know. But if you're a born-again believer and you believe that God Almighty is honest, it don't matter what kind of bomb they come up with next, no weapon. No biological, no chemical, no nuclear, no nothing, no disease that eats flesh. And they're coming up with a new disease every week, you know. Don't matter. None of them will harm you. If you believe it, say it and expect it. That's faith. That is absolute. Take no stuff off the devil. Believe in God. Amen. And by the way, you got to make up your mind. If, if, there's, if you think there's some middle ground, then you're still negotiating. God's either honest or he isn't. If there's one lie in the Bible, he's not honest. There's not one lie in the Bible. Revelations 3 and verse 15, God says, be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. He, he don't like those double-minded. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19 says, I've set before you life or death, the blessing is the curse. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't know we had a choice. We had, uh, like I said, there wasn't much teaching, so there wasn't much understanding. There wasn't much revelation. If the guy in the pulpit doesn't have it, you ain't getting it. Thank God you're getting it here. I know this guy, if you're, if you're sitting under this pulpit, you're getting both barrels at close range. All day truth. Amen. Now, Deuteronomy says, I've set before you life or death, and you get to choose. 
I've set before you the blessing. What does that mean? That means I've given you my word, and you can trust me and obey me, or you can go your own way and do your own thing. You can, you can choose the way or your way. You can be proud and, hey, I got this, or you can humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due season he may exalt you. And he'll cause your path to be successful. And he'll, he'll cause your way to be peaceful and full of joy, unspeakable, mm, 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 and full of glory. Amen. But it's a choice. Now, I didn't know that as a kid. I'm telling you, we, we had these things. We'd have these, like, Sunday was, uh, you know, regular church. Now, on Wednesday night, they had what they call a prayer meeting. And I remember when I was four, five, six years old. I, Daddy didn't go, but Mama went every Wednesday night. And they'd have these, basically these howling contests, it looks like what it's like to me. I mean, and not many of the guys went, but a lot of the ladies went, and they'd bring their kids, and it'd be like, church is starting, they'd all come down front, they'd kneel down there, oh, Jesus! And it'd start, man, and it just, it was like our prayers, we really didn't have any faith. We had some hope. Well, that's good, it's going in the right direction. But prayer for me, I'll just say, not anybody else. I'll just say for me. From my understanding, it was like shooting craps. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> Baby needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a seven this week. You know what I mean? That when you pray the word of God, you're decreeing a thing. If you're praying... If you see a promise, and there's over 7,000 of them in the Word of God, and you decide, you, know, you find the place where you need holy matrimony, and you realize, I don't have that yet. I'm, praise God, it's better than it was, but uh, there's more wisdom in this Word, and I had not got it yet, and I need it. So, I mean, I, I, most of y'all know I was married for years. I, I met my first wife in a bar, and I reaped what I sowed. And when she ran off with somebody, I got born again, so I quit buying dope. That was an unpopular decision at my house. I started tithing. That was a really unpopular decision. I started going to Bible studies, and, and I prayed in tongues a lot. And boy, that'd really make her mad. And so finally one day she ran off with somebody else. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I probably, probably shouldn't have said that. I think I just flashed out, y'all. I apologize. Man, that was really not very nice, was it? But anyway, I, I got a chance to start over. I got a chance to push the reset button. But before I did that, I was alone, and I, I was single. She, uh, man, I came back from preaching one day, and everything had moved from Texas. Uh, not, I mean, I, my house was still in Texas, but there wasn't anything in it. Everything else had gone to Tennessee. The bank was still in Texas, but there wasn't anything in it. <laughs> it all went to Tennessee. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, but the good news is I sought the Lord, and he, he told me, now here's wisdom, son. Go get in counsel. You're asking me for this magnificent wife, but if I give you my best, and that's what you're asking for, and I was, I was trying to get the best wife on the earth. And he said, son, if I give her to you, what's she going to get? You a mess. <laughs> and so he instructed me to go to counseling and start really just opening up my heart and seeking wisdom and counsel about how to reset my life so that I could be the husband that this godly woman... I didn't know who he was going to send me or when or how that was going to work out, but I did believe that God loved me and that he was going to really um, do something amazing. And, and he told me, it was about a year later, but he told me, he said, I'm, I, I don't know how y'all deal with prayer. I'm, I'm a country boy. I'm not, barely got out of high school. You know what I mean? I don't know how everybody else does it, but uh, the scripture says, be anxious for nothing. When I was single, I was anxious. I was, I was wanting a wife. And I actually went on a date one day. I went on one date, took a lady out to dinner. And I, about halfway through the meal, I thought, this is the silliest thing I've done. You know, I'd been married for 29 years. It had been a long time since I'd been on a date. 
And when you're young, you're going on a date, you're trying to be cool. You're trying to impress. You know what I mean? I was sitting there thinking, this is really silly. I apologize to the lady, and, and I, I just went home, and, and uh, I apologized to the Lord. Because I realized I need him to overtake me with his blessing. I'm, I'm out here trying to help God. He don't need no help. So, man, he told me, I said, he said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything you make your petitions known. Petition, I looked up petitions. It just means specific requests. With prayer and thanksgiving, supplication. But God basically said, I'll do it. And so, you know, I wrote God my petition. It was like a little two-page letter. It basically said, Lord, you said it's not good for man to be alone. I agree. <laughs> I remember saying, you said you'd create for him a helpmate that's perfectly suited. This is a New Living uh, Testament over in Genesis. He said, in other words, God, you said man needs help. I agree. I need help. But I want to be a helpmate, too. I want to be her helpmate. I want to help her to be all that you want her to be. I just don't know who it is. But I'd make this, and, and I found in the Proverbs 31 uh, a godly woman that I had a right to believe for. And so I wrote all this, and I'd tell him that every day, and then I'd praise him. And, and one day I was telling him, and I know, you know, I know you've had this happen to you. I'd pray every day, every morning before I started the day, I'd go over my petition, and then I'd praise him. And I'd get my, and I'd say my confessions. I believe I receive her, Lord, and, and I, that I'll recognize her and I'll know it's her when you send her. And, uh, and then one day I was talking to the Lord and he started talking. And I actually, I know this is, I'm ashamed to tell you this, but I didn't expect that. <laughs> All of a sudden he just took over, boy, and his presence filled the room. And I just, whoa, I need to just be still. And he said to me, son, I'm on, you're asking me for the best I got. And he said, I'm going to give her to you. But he said, and I'm going to let you call her your wife. But I want you to remember she's my daughter. And I got a daughter, so I got that. When, when my son-in-law married my daughter, we had a little come to Jesus talk. I, I'm, I was a lot less mature than I am today, but I, I, so I probably didn't handle it right. But I did let him know if you ever get mad enough to where you really uh, uh, don't want her around, send her home will be safer than hurting her. You know, send her to me. And so I looked at that and I realized, you know, how I treat her is going to have a lot to do with what God can trust me with. And he did, as far as I'm concerned, give me his best baby. And I'm so thankful. We do have holy matrimony. But we got it. We both got it in our own way by just believing God. We didn't go out there looking and, and scrambling and, and playing the game. Um, compromise cost us. Absolute faith is pure. And what, you know... If our faith is not pure, then the power we walk in will be limited. Does that make sense to you? So we have to settle this issue of God being absolutely good. Psalm 118 verse 1 says God is good, so everything good in your life is from him. In other words, Satan. Jesus said there is, there is a thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. That's Satan. But I can that you'd have life and life more abundant. If something good is going on in your life, that's God. Something bad, some stealing, your joy, your, your, your romance, anything like that's going on, that's the thief that comes to steal and kill and destroy. Amen? And, and by the way, if you don't know the difference, you won't resist the devil. If you think God made you sick to teach you something, then you'll accept the sickness. Don't ever do that. If, if the devil's trying to kill you, you fight him tooth and nail. Amen? Yes. And the way you resist the devil is with the word of God, of course. There's no walk in the fence with God. You can't just pick and choose what you believe if you want God's best. It's all or nothing with God. You've got to believe he wrote one book. Stay, and I, I, I humbly submit to you 
stay away from those books about, you know, brother so-and-so had a dream and or this child went to heaven and blah, blah, blah. Look out now. Somebody, sometimes they just ate too much pizza. I'm not saying that there's no angels and that people hadn't had visions and dreams. I'm saying you won't get into error if you keep with the Word of God. There's total safety in believing God's Word. Receiving God's best requires absolute faith. We know... Let me, let me shorten this just a second. Ah, Abraham, look at it. Verse 16, Abraham had absolute faith. He considered not his own body or Sarah's, or the natural circumstance, in other words. But let me just remind you, now, I, I said this with you last year. Abraham we refer to in Hebrews as the father of faith. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, that's the children, not only to those who are of the law or Jews, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, Abraham is referred to as the father of all believers. Believers. That's what people of faith are. They are people who believe God is honest the way Abraham did. But I just want to remind you that when Abraham and his wife were praying for a son, and God showed up, an angel of the Lord showed up and told him, you're going to have a son. I'm answering your prayer. His wife actually laughed. Yeah, right. I mean, she's like 70 years old. Now, she'd been praying this prayer since she was a teenager. So she had, you know, after 55, 60 years of, of not getting her prayers answered, I'm sure that would, you know, affect you but the bottom line is they didn't believe and it took God 20 years to bring them from hoping to the point of what God's word calls having no doubt what's the way the word puts it baby he was fully persuaded now that's absolute faith so here's the good news if you're not there yet it's okay. It took Abraham 20 years. And by the way, he wasn't getting it after 19. God had to, God, God sent an angel of the Lord. I mean, he tried, he even went, uh, his wife after a while, and it didn't work the way they thought it was going to. Uh, his wife said, well, you know, you need to get with my girl here, or her uh, helper. And so we have now um, Ishmael. One of the biggest problems on the earth. The sons of Ishmael. Well, that's what happens. We've all created those, or at least I have. You know, we've all created those, our version of we're going to help God out. God don't need any help being God. He just needs one thing, somebody to believe all things are possible, only believe. Don't do any works. God doesn't need you to pray all night and fast till you're starving to death. And get, there's a good things. We need to do these things, but we need to know that everything we get from God comes because we believe he's honest. Amen? Now, Abraham, in order for God to get him to the place he needed to be, God had to say to him, I'm changing your name. His name was Abram. When he changed it to Abraham, Abraham means the father of many nations. Now, this is a guy who's 100 years old, and he tells all his family, now think about telling your family this, you ain't got any kids, and he says to all his family, if you don't call me the guy with more kids than anybody else on the earth, I will never answer you or uh, re respond to you again because that's who I am. God said it, and I believe it, and so I am the father of many nations, Abraham. And you know what his family thought because they've done it to you. Well, Abe, bless you, heart, you. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Abe's got, you know, he's, he's lost his grip, and he's, he's got already, he thinks God's talking to him. That's called persecution. It's how you get the hundredfold. It goes with the hundredfold. It goes with your TV show going to 89,000 and all of a sudden going to 800 million. Ooh, I'm about to shout somebody. 
I mean, it comes with persecution. And how you handle the persecution, I mean, it's just the turf. If you, Jesus said, if you follow me, you're going to get persecuted. They're going to claim you said things you didn't say. They're going to claim they're going to lie about you and then tell all your friends that you're the liar. Yeah. And how you handle that, you'll either get in strife or you'll stay in love. You'll either forgive or you'll get them. Or you'll be begging God, get them, God. You know they're lying. He said, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Now, praying for them don't mean, okay, God, pulverize them. That ain't for them. That's against them. Praying for them means, God, they're messing up right now. Have mercy on them like you did with me. And thank you for it. I forgive them. They owe me nothing but love. Help them, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, that's how you get from here to absolute, okay, whatever happens for the rest of my life, I don't have to worry about it. We were on that plane yesterday in that weather coming over here from Texas. That plane was bouncing all over the sky. And I could sit there in the middle of that with no concern. And I used to be freaking out all the time. Fear the spirit of fear was a generational curse in my family. We worried about everything. My mama and my grandmama thought if you didn't worry about your kids, you didn't love them. Every time I ever went to go swimming with my buddies, my mama would say to my dad, don't let him go to that lake. They will drown. They will. Don't let him get on that bicycle. Somebody's going to run over him. I heard it every day. And I grew up, I had the fear of rejection. I had the fear of failure. I had to fear not just of the devil and the darkness and the evil, and I had to fear of everything, man. I mean, it, and no matter how good things were going, I kept expecting, uh oh, the other shoe's going to drop any minute now. And it, as an adult, I was considered manic depressive. And I took every drug I could find trying to not calm and deaden those fears, and I drank everything that they had at the bar. But you can't get rid of a devil with a pill or, or, a, or a line or a joint or a, a needle. You got to rebuke them. You got to bind them and speak to them and use your faith, and they'll disappear on you. Praise God. And Brother Copeland got that spirit of fear off of me. And man, I'm telling you, it is magnificent to be able to rest in the Lord no matter what else is going on. Our faith works by love. Romans 5 and 5 said, The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. John, 1 John 4 and 8 says, He who does not love doesn't even know God, for God is love. Each of us has been given a portion of faith, Romans says. And Galatians 5 22 says, Faith and love are the fruits which can grow. Fruit grows. Y'all know that. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. We said that earlier and hearing the word of God. And by the way, you can have as much faith as you want. How much word are you willing to hear? If you want to read the Bible every day, you'll have more faith than if you read it on Sunday. I've seen people that were get born again when they're 30 or 40, but they were really serious and they'd already, they'd already tried things their way and they knew it didn't work. And boy, those people grow up, man, they get, they go quick. And I've seen some others that stayed in kindergarten for 50 years. Just as angry as they were 50 years ago, just as scared as they were, hadn't learned anything, hadn't submitted anything or anybody, just go to church, ask God to forgive them. Amen. Absolute, the reward is absolute freedom, absolute healing, absolute prosperity. John 16, 13 says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. That's the Holy Spirit. For he will not speak on his own authority, but what he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you the things to come. He'll prepare you for the future. John 8, 31, as we continue the word, we know the truth. That's where we got the name of our, our show. is called On the Road to Freedom. He said, if you continue my word, you will be my disciples. You will know the truth, and it will make you free. So that's why we keep teaching the word of God. 
rest. I want to talk to you about rest and pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. No more what if. No more why, when, or how. What about Sister So-and-so? What about what they did? Well, well she, she went to church all the time. She got sick, and she prayed, and she died. Hey, you don't know what she believed, and you don't know what she said, but God does. And I have had people stand. I teach on faith a lot, and I teach on healing. I've had people come and really get mad at me because somebody they loved died while they were, quote, unquote, believing God. I, I don't go there. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But it amazes me that we want to defend the integrity of our kinfolks, but not of God. God said he's not a man that he could lie. Have, have any of the rest of us lied? We all have. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. We've all believed lies, and we've all told lies. God's never told one. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4 and verse 3, this last one. They that believe do enter into God's rest. Now, I believe God sent me here and changed everything at the last minute because somebody needed to enter his rest. Somebody has been in mental chaos. The Bible says fear has torment. I mean, I was tormented until I met Brother Copeland. And by the way, I got born again in 1980. I didn't meet Brother Copeland until 1990. For 10 years, I became an elder at my church. My, my little band, I gave my heart to Jesus. You saw the thing up there. I was a musician. I had never done anything but make music. My parents were musicians. I got out of high school. I had no skills, no education to do anything else. I got born again. I knew how to write songs. I knew how to... to produce records and you had to arrange songs and you had to be in a band but I didn't know how to do anything else I'd never made a dime doing anything else in my life to to buy food and and just to live so when I got born again and I gave my life to Jesus music was my life basically is all I had to give him so I started a Christian band I started writing songs about his word instead of what I'd been thinking Previous to that, I just documented my life. And songs were like a musical diary, and I wrote them every day. Whoever I met, wherever I went, whatever I was doing, thinking about. And all of a sudden, I started writing kingdom thoughts and, and uh, writing about the goodness of God and, and, and His holiness and, uh, and worship and praising Him and everything. And, but there was a time in there where I didn't know what to do. Man, I knew what not to do. But I didn't know what to do. I went to my pastor. I said, I need, I need something to do. All my friends, you know, I've been stoned for 21 years. All my friends stayed stoned, and we did it at night usually. We'd go out about 10 o'clock and meet somewhere in some bar, and then we'd carry on and go. We slept in the daytime, stayed up at night. When I got born again, I didn't have any friends to hang out with. I couldn't go around the dope anymore, or the, or the girls, you know, and the places where I chose to sin and so my pastor gave me a job as a janitor at my church and I quit rock and roll because I could not live maybe you could have but I couldn't I couldn't stay out there with all the dope and the groupies and everything that was going on out there in rock and roll and the language and the, I just couldn't be surrounded with that chaos anymore and, and so I came into the I, I became a janitor at my church I started cleaning the toilets there but I could go to church every night Every night they had something. It was a big church. They had on Monday night they had a. I I was 35 at the time, but Monday night was for the elderly. I don't remember what they call it, the silver or something. But basically everybody had silver hair, but me. When I went to that meeting, cause I just needed to be somewhere. On Tuesday night they had uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. I didn't really have that much trouble with alcohol, but I went, cause I just needed to be somewhere. Wednesday night we had church. Thursday night they had a. They had a, a Bible study called College and Young Singles. I didn't get to go to college, and I wasn't young or single. But I went there because it was a Bible study. And every night, and, and uh, it was the best time, man. I was learning and growing. And, and so I was learning how to get to that place. When I met Brother Copeland, 
We had led 211,000 kids to Christ by then, that band. We, I was an elder at the church. My life was so much better than it had ever been, but I still was bound by that spirit of fear. Tormented me all the time until I learned how to live by faith. Believing God is a lifestyle. It's not something where you say, oh, we're a people of faith. Not unless we believe God's honest or not. We just go to church. But when we are believers, that's when the power starts flowing. That's when you become the big one in the room. When the devil attacks you, you don't have to sweat it. Because you know he that's in you is stronger and bigger and greater than he that's in the world. Will you bow your heads, please? If you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you and I want to pray with you. If you're here this morning and you've never, I'm talking about accepted Jesus as your Lord and Master, not just your Savior. But if you've never done that, you need to do that this morning. I'm, I'm not going to ask you to come down here. I think you just need to make a, you need to choose life. Choose the blessings of God. Choose him as your Jesus as your Savior and your Lord and your Master so if you've never done that or if you need to redo that if like me you just need to push the reset button and start over today I want to ask you to just simply uh, every, every head's bowed right now every eye please I'm asking everybody to close your eyes because I want to give everybody around you just a moment of privacy please if you're here, I'm asking you to humble yourself. Me and Jesus are watching. Does anybody just slip your hand up and say, pray for me, man. I need it. I know. Praise God, honey. Excellent. Praise God, sir. Excellent. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Glory to God. Excellent decision. Wise decision. Anybody else up in the balcony? God talking to anybody up there? You need anything? Praise God. Amen. Yes. Excellent, sir. Thank you, my brother. That's precious. Anybody else? We're going to join our faith with yours. If this is the last time you'll have to do this, that God's going to bring you to such a healthy, strong place in Him, that your future's going to be exciting and bright in Him. Anybody else? Slip your hand up and let me know. God's been watching your heart. I'm watching for your hand, but God's watching your heart. Anybody willing to humble yourself and say, help me, Jesus. Praise God, honey. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. One last time. Anybody else? Glory to God, sir. Glory to God, sir. What an honor to be your brother. That was precious. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say this with me out loud, please. Father God, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I come boldly before the throne of grace. And I believe that I receive mercy and help in time of need. Help me, Lord to relax in you, to absolutely put my trust in you. Once and for all, I choose you, Jesus, as my Savior, my Lord, my King, my Master. I give you my life, all of it, everything that I have any control over, I submit it to you, sir. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for cleansing me from all unrighteousness. Thank you for granting me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Well, pastor's going to come up and Man, I, I can't see that clock from here. I, uh, 
Probably should have brought my. Well, I went over to him, but that's. I've done that before. I, I hate to even ask you to forgive me. I'd probably do it again next time. But uh, we just went over some of the most important things. You know, if it was the last time I was ever going to get to talk to you, I would have talked to you about this today. This will save you life. This is life or death stuff. Amen. I just want to say, Christian, I love y'all. We don't know all your names, but God does. We're going to be praying in the Holy Ghost on the way back to the airport. We're going to be praying in understanding for you. We are partners with this church. When you, when you partnered up with us, we partnered up with you. And we're believing God with you for his best. We love y'all. It's such an honor that you allow us to share, especially you, sir, you, ma'am. What an honor that you allow us to stand in this holy place. Thank you, and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, if you were one of those that raised your hand and prayed for it today, uh, there's a connection card in the seat pocket in front of you there, on the back of the chair, the seat in front of you. Take that and fill it out. Let us know what happened to you. Leave it on your chair today as you go out, or drop it in the pedestals on the way out, or give it to an usher. Praise the Lord. So but let us know what happened. Praise God. God is good in uh, So I'm going to go ahead and ask you that we, we're going to receive an offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, if you're going to clap, let's clap. Amen. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, as we have opportunity to do good, let us do good to all men, but especially to those that are of the household of faith. I'm giving you that opportunity. Amen. He, we're we're going to obey the word of God. If we have that opportunity to do good, let us do good all men, but especially to those that are household of faith. But we know, my and Christian, we know they're of the household of faith. Amen. So we, we want we want to bless them. You can make your check payable to the Catholic Christian Fellowship or DCF and uh, every penny of this offering will go into their ministry. We'll just write them one check and uh, they won't have to take all those, all those uh, checks with them. So praise God. Go ahead and do that if you will. And uh, as you do that, uh, and ushers are, are getting ready to receive the offering, want to uh, just ask you to be in prayer for uh, for my family. Uh, I got a call last night. I got home from the from the dinner last night, and I got a call that my uh, nephew uh, had committed suicide last night. So, uh, anyway, so uh, y'all just pray, you know, for uh, uh, for my brother and his family. And y'all, y'all just lift them up in prayer. Amen. Do that. And, uh, then I got. Looking on Facebook this morning, I had a first cousin to die, too. So, uh, this yesterday. So, so, it seems like my family's been attacked a little bit. But we know God is a good God. Don't we? Amen. So, y'all remember y'all remember us in prayer. And uh, we appreciate it. Amen. All right, you got an offering? Usher, y'all go ahead and wait on the people. Praise the Lord. Don't forget the product table back there. Amen. And I thank you. I, you know, Brother Milan, I was going to get me one of these caps anyway. You gave that to me. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Sheila says I have too many hats anyway. I got a, I got a closet full of hats. <laughs> Amen. All right, I, I was looking at it. I think this looks good on somebody else. Maybe I need to buy this for him. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. God is a good God all the time and all the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. Thank God the rain has stopped. Hallelujah. The sun is shining. It's a great day to be a child of God. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I was listening to uh, Brother Milan Saturday. I was on the treadmill. I got a little TV above my treadmill. And so I, I, I just leave it on the BBON. And uh, with Kenneth Copeland's uh, television station. And, uh, Milan was on there giving his testimony in a prison somewhere in Texas, I think. Well, I've seen it the last two weeks. And uh, that was good. And then Glory Copeland came on right at the end of, of their program. And uh, she was in Tallahassee, Florida. And a tornado ripped the top of the building off. <laughs> and she just kept preaching. <laughs> Glory to God. And uh, they're, they're people of faith. Man, I'm telling you. Glory. All right. I'm going to ask my prayer team to come at this time. If you go ahead and come. If you need prayer about anything, moment, I'm just going to dismiss you. If you need prayer about anything, that we
we haven't already covered. Would like hands be laid on somebody to greet with you in prayer? Uh, this is my prayer team up here. They're hand picked. They know how to pray. And uh, you come and let us pray with you. We'll stay with you as long as we need to. The rest of you, let's all stand our feet. The rest of you, you're dismissed. Give somebody a big old Holy Ghost hug. God bless you. We love you. You're dismissed. Go rejoicing. We'll see you real soon. God bless you.